myself and PT and Brando, wherever he ran off to. Um, I'm going to read a couple, I'm going to read some haiku and then um, sort of two spoken word things that I've been working on. One's kind of, one's, one's like from a couple months ago and then one I was trying to finish today and it's probably going to be like a piece that I work on and do better with later. But, um, okay, so these are haiku because I compete in a lot of these haiku tournaments that my friend Raven Mac does. At, um, he does them at Ballisto and he does them in Charlottesville too. And they're really, really fun, so I think everybody should write haiku and compete in the tournaments. They're, in the, they're the last Wednesday of every month at Ballisto at 8 p.m. Uh, so these are just some of the ones I've done in those tournaments. All carpenters have the cutest little bellies, level, square, and plumb. I should point out that haikus are 575, uh, if people don't know. Like, I used to not remember that at all. Um, five, seven, five, what? Syllables. Five syllables, seven syllables, five syllables. And they, I think traditionally they're supposed to be about like one type of content or like flowers or something, but um, that's not how we do it in Richmond. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> this one's actually about Arch House. It's Scrabble by Lantern, Friends Lost, Revived, and Some New, Sparklers and Skeeters. Strangled by to-do lists is how they will find me, what will be crossed off. If the Lord wills it, we will have the time and space to get the curb couch, which y'all are now sitting on. Um, Alec balances on joists, thinking he won't fall, 16 on center. He rescued a road turtle. Days later, we found one Bella Dog ate. Condos for the rich, but only jails for the poor. Lovely river views. If you want some of my Hanover tomatoes, you better behave. Dumping 10,000 honeybees, thunk, thunk, into a hive, not for wimps. Humans drink soda, and bees like sugar water. Can't we all be friends? Gojo dispenser we found in an old warehouse. Clean hands for life, y'all. All ages shows build the future of a scene, so fuck your booze culture. And that's haikus really fast. Um, Okay, and this is one that I think I posted it written online at one point, but I was going to read it at City Council one time, and I was really scared. But then, like, they dropped that, like they always do, they move that item from that agenda to a different agenda, so then I didn't have to read it. And I was like, thank Christ. Um, but I will read it now. I will attempt. <clears throat> there has been a lot going on in Richmond for the past months. 2014 is turning out to be a pivotal year for the city, a year where everything is on the line. Right now, on the precipice of multiple changes, I'm taking a look into my crystal ball to see what the future may hold. Like any prediction, this is no static vision. Things don't have to turn out like what I'm seeing. What happens if a development in Shaco Bottom is created, using 80 million of public funds to build a ballpark in a historic site? What happens if Monroe Park is privatized and attempts are made to kick food not bombs and the homeless out? What happens if our schools and children continue to suffer because Vulture Richmond gets tax breaks they don't deserve? Well, what I'm seeing is the resistance is what will happen. The resistance won't be a formal organization, but a banner taken up by dozens, hundreds, thousands who are sick of living in a place where the few rule the many, where the money speaks louder than our voices, and where there is more oppression daily. The resistance won't stick to one set of tactics, but will embrace a true diversity of tactics to liberate Richmond from the oppressive bad decisions brought about by Mayor Jones, City Council of Vulture Richmond, and the Monroe Park Advisory Council, among others. I'm seeing members of the resistance outside of the houses of City, City Council, Monroe Park Advisory Council, Vulture Richmond, Looting RVA, local developers, and more. Holding a boombox is John Cusack style. Blasting, nowhere to run, baby, nowhere to hide. By Martha and the Mandelas. Because as we all know from campaigns like Stop Hunting to the Animal Cruelty, the enemies have faces and names and addresses. Any good resistance will be sure to gather this intel and use it appropriately to bring to the protest to bring the protest to the people responsible for the decisions privatizing our city. Critical mass bike rides will take a new tone, following a route between the homes and businesses of individuals involved in the privatization of Richmond. Moped and motorcycle gangs will take the time to circle the block where Alice Massey lives, rev their engines in front of Mayor Jones' house, and do donuts in the parking lot of Vulture Richmond and others. A resistance plays, playlist will develop, and the song will haunt supporters of privatization throughout their daily lives. Banners will be dropped from highway overpasses with messages promoting liberation and an end to corruption in Richmond. A generation of youth will discover the joys of street art, wheat pacing, and spray painting their way from one end of town to the other, spreading messages of the resistance of freedom of public spaces. And don't tell me that you aren't hungry for action. We've seen them. You've seen them. They're itching for something to do. You may put up fences. They will come down. 
Your bulldozers will be lucky to have an unblocked day. There will be tree sits, crane sits, people parts of the Redskins training camp between the field goal uprights. There will be lockdowns, there will be glue and locks, there will be glitter, there will be cream pies and faces, there will be heckling, I hope you can put up with it. There will be parties in the streets, uncontrollable crowds, meetups in the most unlikely of places, flash mobs that break into song and dance in really inconvenient places. There will be boycotts of restaurants, bars, retail, and sports teams involved in these schemes. There will be a continued push for a $15 minimum wage and strikes across the city until that comes to be. There will be queers protesting for more than the right to marry. There will be sit-ins for change, office occupations. There will be unruly musical performances. All these developments and privatizations meant to bring prestige and justice and pride to Richmond will simply become sites of protests and problems. The legacy left behind by Jones will be one of embarrassment and excruciating public failure. We will feed each other, teach each other, hold cop wash and know your rights workshops, trade herbal medicine ideas, exchange massages, have support groups, hold consent workshops, create visions of a better world. We will drink a lot of coffee. We will support each other mentally, physically, and emotionally. We will fundraise bail money for our comrades. It may seem unlikely for such a vision of the future to come about, but you are forgetting that the regime is boring, privatization is boring, rules are boring. Resistance is fun. Resistance speaks to people who have no interest in attending city council meetings or of the nuts and bolts of whatever oppressive plan is on the table. In the future, the resistance disrupts every single city meeting. Resistance has enough participants that you could never ban them all. A new face at every meeting ready to shout down your white lies, your assertions of a false reality, or Orwellian doublespeak. No meeting goes unscathed. Disruptions at meetings and press releases to reflect the disruptive effect of your decisions that ha they have on the people. Maybe you think issues in Richmond are too small to spark the resistance, but you forget about endless war, increasing poverty, bad schools, dying capitalism, unemployment, public transit, police brutality, noise ordinances, dance ordinances, and more. You forget the larger context of suffering and oppression and racism and sexism and homophobia and transphobia and classism. People are worn out, people are worn out, people are worn out, and at some point, the last straw goes on the camel and the back breaks. When we break, we rise. When we break, we rise. When we break, we rise. This isn't a threat, not even a warning. This is a prediction of a vision out of passion, founded in the history of Monroe Park, the development of it as sacred ground. Yes, sacred ground. Not the same sacred ground that you find in Chaco Bottom, but a place of great sacredness nonetheless, where protest and passion are deep in the roots of the trees. The land there is drenched in the power of the people, and the power of the people don't stop, say what? There ain't no power like the power of the people, and the power of the people don't stop, say what? Privatize Monroe Park, and the entirety of the East Coast Occupy movements will descend on Richmond to occupy not only Monroe Park, but the medians and Monument Avenue too. You can bring all your stormtroopers at your disposal, but you won't dispose of us, you won't dispose of the resistance. There are more where we come from, more desperate people, more tired people, more bored people. People with broken backs who are ready to rise. Everyone knows it is wrong to privatize the public park. Everyone knows only true cowards prey on the hungry, prey on those without homes, prey on those who need the most solidarity in our society. Only true cowards, like the 1%, who would go to any park they wanted to, would try to force the home without a Monroe Park. Maybe it's cheesy, but I think it holds true, that the generation at hand is catching fire full of mockingbirds and ready to hunt zombies. Unfortunately for you, you are the zombies, you are the capital, you are boring, and we are divergent. More people understand what fascism looks like, know the sacrifices required in the resistance, and know what true, the true honor lies in taking action to reduce suffering. Popular culture has given those of us who didn't know examples of what fighting back can start to look like, and people are ready to start fighting back. The resistance has far more potential for capturing the popular imagination than all those ordinances and resolutions do. You see, there has to be a line somewhere. A line in the sand, if you will. And y'all are in the process of crossing that line in a couple of different ways. Maybe you don't see it as a line yet. Maybe you won't until it is too late. Understand that you simply cannot keep taking and taking and pushing and pushing and expect no pushback. You will get pushed back, pushed back. Don't get it twisted. This isn't a declaration of war. It's a declaration of weather and the storm is coming. Weather above and underground going to hit the city. I don't think you'll be ready for the storm. I don't think you want to try to get through this storm. I don't think you want this storm. But hey, this is just a vision. Who knows what the future holds? Just keep an eye out for those storm clouds of resistance. Okay, and I just have one more. It's a lot shorter. It's the one I was working on today. No shit. No. Um, grits, put your hairs down. Shoot our hairs up. Come here, come here. Come now. Come now. Come here, Grace. Come here, Grace. Okay. Um, this one's called Need a Man. 
I don't want to write another feminist poem whining about men, the patriarchy, and how that shit is fucking ruining the world. I don't want to. But at least once a day, my head hits this rhythm, thinking about how men suck and their actions are buzzkilling. If I could not say it, if I didn't have to say it, I wouldn't. But goddamn, it's some shit. Some shit a lot of people are complicit with. The equa equation of socially constructed false binary gender with certain identity traits. Men aren't tough. Men aren't strong. Men aren't tall. The fuck even is a man? Being a man does not guarantee a single thing about a person except for with cis men and the privileges they get. I don't want to have to say these words, but God damn it, I have to hear the same patriarchal shit on a daily basis, the cat calls, the casual and not so casual sexism. Formal sexism? If you don't want to hear me talk about it, I suggest you help stop the patriarchy. If silence change, if silence change anything, I don't fucking know, mimes and shit. Mimes would take over. I'm talking about it, I'm talking about it, I'm walking about it, do both or get. Lately, the one that really gets my goat is that no matter how tough I am, some asshole always goes, help, we need a man. I'll be at work scraping paint or hauling boards, minor play in the words I keep hearing. Need a man, need a man, need a man. Haunting, taunting, I can't let it go. Who the fuck needs a man? I need a man just like I need a pile of dirty dishes left in my fucking sink. I need a man? Ha! I'll be some shit, I'll be doing some shit like handling an emergency or carrying insulation at Lowe's and some fucking person will exclaim that I need a man. I mean really, what would I need a man for? I don't need a dick, I've got a drawer full. I don't need a goatee, I'm starting my own. I don't need a goddamn thing from any socially constructed, totally bullshit, pretend-ass gender identity that I can't get from myself. When I decide, when I decide, when I decide I want a man, well that's between me and him, the dogs and the lord. <laughs> the innate, the essence, the, the core of man, well I'm pretty sure I can buy some axe and get that shit in a can. Men can't do anything that I can't, simply by nature of being a man. If you need a medic, yell medic. If you need a carpenter, just ask. If you you yell, we need a man, I'll kick your fucking ass. Yay. <laughs> Thank you. 